Today, we are discovering what secrets Survivor Africa did not tell us in the edited TV show. Some of these will be game related, some are strategic, and some are just plain silly. Basically, as long as it isn't part of the show that aired on TV, it is fair game to be considered a secret. And while most of the secrets here are focused on Survivor Africa, some of them do apply to Survivor as a whole. Heads up, this list contains the secrets that I personally found to be the most interesting. Not every single secret in existence about this season is in this video. So with that, let's count all 34 of them in absolutely no particular order. 39 days, 16 people, one. Survivor. Number one. The promos for Survivor during this era were nothing short of sensationalism, almost clickbaity to use a modern term, in trying to get you to watch every episode. However, another part of them that I feel largely goes unrecognized is how they used to attempt to persuade audiences to root for certain characters and dislike others. For example, can you tell me who they want you to root for from this final four? It started with 16 survivors. They endured wild animals, challenges, and each other. Now four are left. Who will be the ultimate survivor? Will it be Lex, the impulsive dad? Yeah! Kim, the last of the survivor women. Be interesting, tribal council. Ethan, the fan favorite. I'm, I'm almost there. Or Tom, the crafty good old boy. Every dog has his day, you know? It's the most dramatic survivor tribal council Ever, followed by the live one hour reunion show, CBS Thursday. Number two. In a special that aired after Survivor Africa, we catch up with the castaways many months later. And apparently, Tom loves his cast as much as he loves his cattle. And Kim Johnson is. Where is that old goat at? Come here. Come here. Come here, Kim. I just put their names in the cattle and. and they have some of their characteristics. With that, thank you for watching Once Upon an Island. Liking and subscribing really helps. And if you want to pick what videos I make and watch every video weeks and even months early, then consider supporting the channel on Patreon. If that interests you, then check out the link in the description. Thank you for your support. Number three, we all saw Lex drop early from that final three immunity challenge. And unfortunately, it seems like the elements did him in as he explains here. I came home pretty sick. The first three weeks back here were spent pretty much just doing a lot of this. And my doctor found no less than four different parasites and a couple of different bacteria. I have to take so many pills, probably like almost a dozen. Number four, Frank, Frank, Frank. I believe he's the only castaway they have ever let just ramble on with his unpopular political beliefs on Survivor. And I cannot express how funny, yet hard to watch it is, when he does the same on his early show interview. Now, Frank, I'm watching this last night. Now, that that little thing you're doing, you know, that rant you went on is in the, on the morning of Tribal Council. But I'm thinking as a viewer, somebody took his stupid pills today <laughs> because I figured you were definitely out after that. And it turns out I was right. I liked you more in the last 30 seconds of the show last night. <laughs> <laughs> that I did the whole season. <laughs> did you think you were a little harsh watching it, though? No, not at all, no. It's, like I said, unfortunately, there are certain people in our society that have to wear those hats and, and get the job done. Mm -hmm. Just like that. You know, I grew up when you used to say the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag in school. You said your prayers. You were brought up, yes, ma'am, no, sir. You know, and you put in a hard day's work. You gave 110% and hoped to get 20% back. Yeah. I think, but people today, especially, we seem to be oversensitized, you know, politically correct. Right. And I just speak my mind, you know. Number five, we saw so, so many animals during the season of Survivor, and yet the players starved. But why? Did they not know how to hunt, or were they just not allowed? I went over there thinking that I'm going to climb up in a tree over a water hole, spend 10 to 12 hours, take out a dick dick, a Thompson gazelle, you know, a warthog of something of that nature, and suddenly I found out I'm on a vegetarian survival. <laughs> like, unfortunately, on the Shaba Preserve, there was no hunting allowed. Uh, that particular section of Kenya and East Africa was pretty well pounded uh, by poachers in the 60s and the 70s. So the government, you know, along with the Kenya military now in force and no hunting zone in there. Number six, as we saw in the pre-merge, the blood drinking challenge was a cakewalk in large part due to them mixing milk in. Not one player really seemed to struggle with this task, but the ads wanted us to think something different before the episode aired. Your favorite show is back on CBS Thursday. And if you thought the new Survivor Africa wasn't wilder, Step up. Call on. tougher. Water is everything, because without it, you are done like that. And more treacherous than anything you've ever seen before. Trust me on this, all right? Be telling this to everyone. Imagine having to pass this test. You're drinking pure blood. To stay in the game. All new 
Survivor Africa, CBS Thursday. Number seven. So how did the challenge producers come up with this blood drinking task? Because they never did it before and they have not done it since. When we went to Africa, we got to interview Samburu warriors and find out about their life, their rituals, how they survive out in the middle of the desert uh, with nothing. And one of the ways they survive is by drinking the blood of the cow. And so we went to one of these uh, rituals where they were bleeding a cow, they shoot it in the neck with, a, uh, with an arrow and then drain the blood and then they mix it with a little milk and drink it. And we said, that's a great challenge for the show. Number eight. One may think that if someone like a Big Tom or Alex were to get their own reality show, that it would have happened not too long after Survivor Africa. Well, buddy, try 12 years later when Duck Dynasty was all the rage and Tom's family got a pilot for a show called Family Beef by National Geographic that didn't really take off. Link in the description for the whole episode. <laughs> Valley View Farms made up of 2,000 acres, 1,000 head of cattle, and three dumbass farmers. I'm Big Tom, B-I-G-T-O-M. Poppy's my daddy, Bo's my son, and a full-time goober. By God, we run this farm. I was smart enough to marry Sandy. I call Sandy Seabiscuit, because every biscuit she sees, she eats. My mother is the gravy-making folk. Desiree is Bo's wife. Who in the hell would marry Bo? Much less have children with you. When it's all said and done, we live tough here. If you don't believe it, come and try it. We're knee deep in cow poop. Life on the farm. Number nine, Africa is by far the most dangerous location the show has ever shot in. The producers even forced the tribes to build a fence around their camp. They had to have their people stay awake all night to keep the fire going to stop the lines from entering. And it was hot as balls with no shade all day absolute madness. Here's some more information about the dangers of this season. We were in tents in Kenya, in Africa, literally in the middle of all this wildlife and you'd unzip your tent in the morning one click at a time because you wanted to not scare off the zebra that were waiting outside your, you'd literally go, and you'd open up and there'd be a herd of zebras. It was incredible. It requires safety measures like electric fences around the production compound and the constant presence of armed guards on patrol. Number 10. In an interview that came out around the time of seasons 25 or 26, Jeff freely admits that yeah, so far Ethan Zahn is the best representative of Survivor. Ethan Zahn is the best representative we've ever had on Survivor. He took his money and started a a uh, grassroots soccer program to teach AIDS awareness through soccer all over the world, and then was uh, struck with cancer and has battled it twice. He is the nicest guy, he's the most positive guy, and he's the greatest representative you've, you could ever want for your show. Number 11, Survivor was a big deal. Advertising for the show was everywhere after the smash success of Borneo and the Australian Outback, so much so that the show Hollywood Squares spent an entire week dedicated to Africa. Could you imagine any show doing this for a modern Survivor today? Where are our dressing rooms? Well, they only have two for us, and they say we have to share. Moran and Samburu? Not quite. It's Survivor Week on Hollywood Squares! And here's Tom! See if I can survive in Tinseltown. Watch Hollywood Squares Survivor Week. Join me for Hollywood Squares Survivor Week. Watch Hollywood Squares Survivor Week. Y'all stay tuned now, you hear? Check out Hollywood Squares Survivor Week. Check out Hollywood Squares Survivor Week. I survived! Number 12. On the flip side of something interesting like Hollywood Squares is the TV special called Countdown to Africa, which is so, so boring. Why? Because 99% of it is about seasons one and two with almost nothing talking about the upcoming season. It really feels like they're just milking the cow dry here. Number 13. On some of these DVD sets for older seasons, they will just straight up include B-roll with the original audio intact and almost no editing whatsoever. It makes for a more genuine survivor experience when you watch it. And the coolest B-roll for this season is this helicopter shot over the area, including tribal council during the daylight. Number 14. With social media these days, every player seemingly more caught 
cautious as to what they do on Survivor and how they portray themselves so that they don't get canceled online. Well, back during Africa, the online fandom was much smaller, but boy, does it affect these players nonetheless. Isn't it true you were a little upset when you came back going into chat rooms or reading in newspapers, these things that- Where are you hearing these rumors? <laughs> <laughs> it, well, is it my true? My phone tapped? Oh, that's where gosh. I was reading in my little papers. Well, there. yeah, those, you know, it's a big mistake to go on the internet, especially me. I think I'm the most talked about survivor ever, and it's not positive. Oh, Jerry would give you a run, Jerry. Like, yeah. <laughs> but you know, even, it she was, was here yesterday, even she was saying- She, she was ripping on me. Yeah. Ah, hello. <laughs> Number 15, when Clarence and T-Bird faced off in the immunity challenge with their arms raised high, did you have the desire to flirt with Clarence and make a room full of people feel awkward? If so, you're not the only one. I, I am because I was telling Russ in the commercial break that I, I really loved that immunity challenge last night because you had your arm up and I'm an arm kind of woman. Well, thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Russ, let's you you looking and I just good. move off. Really good. That's that. Exactly. He was, he was looking good. Number 16, there are many close calls in life. Wu taking Tony over Cass. Hatch beating Kelly by one vote. That time Eric gave away immunity. I don't know if you've heard about it. Another close call comes this season when Ethan almost didn't play. Would it be um, wrong to say that you're about 24 hours removed from not even being on this game? I mean, you were about to take a job. Oh, yeah, I was definitely about to take a job. The next yeah. morning? Um, yeah, definitely. And the guy called you that night and said, hey, your job's been carved out of the budget. Exactly. See you around. Yeah, and I was, you know, I was upset. Here I am, you know, ready to start a full-time job, start a career, start a life, and then it's taken out, taken away from me. And so I'm like, what am I gonna do now? What am I gonna, so apply to Survivor, why not? Number 17, during that final three immunity challenge, Ethan dropped so much sooner than anyone would have thought. I mean, even Lex, who was suffering so much worse, outlasted him. So why did this happen? That as you were doing that challenge, the cameraman who was underneath you, yeah. shooting up at you, go ahead and tell us what happened. He just threw up right in his hat. And it was so hot, He was I don't know what was wrong with him. He was so dehydrated, he was filming me, and I'm sitting there staring down and he threw up right in his hat. You know, Lex saw it, I saw it, and uh, I hate people throwing well, up in front of me. I was gonna say, you who has an aversion of chunky shit yeah. to begin with. Oh yeah. Number 18, back in the early days of Survivor, Destiny's Child released a song called Survivor, and apparently this was written as an anthem for them, since after losing two thirds of their group in one fell swoop, followed by another person joining and then leaving soon after, people started publicly comparing being in this group as playing on the show Survivor, and this song was their answer. They proceeded to break up five years later. Number 19, do you recall the fake out finale where Survivor tried to convince us they were were revealing the votes on location in Africa. As a child, I was blown away, but as an adult, I can clearly see how Kim and Ethan put on weight with Kim wearing makeup. Anyways, here's someone who worked behind the scenes on that. And the home audience, we tried very hard to make sure this studio audience didn't know, thinking they were still in the Philippines or where, where, wherever the show was. So we recreated every last detail of that set and that look and some of the some of the, the contestants had changed a little bit in the p two months, so they, they were, they, they, had look, they looked different, but we had to put them in the exact same outfits and the exact same positions, and so that Jeff walks back in, and he does the counting, and the winner's announced, and then I do this, this uh, zip, the, the, this, uh, this snap zoom, to zoom back and show that we're, whoa, wait a minute, we're not in the Philippines, we're in the studio in California, and there's a giant audience here in the foreground, and that was super cool. Number 20, back in the days of old, the winner did not receive their million dollar check at the reunion like they do now, but the next day on the early show instead. I did a little math too, Brian. Yeah. It's just a little under 27,000 a day. <laughs> wow. Oh, is that right? Yeah, in case you're wondering. Thank you. you, you it's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Oh, wow. I owe that much. <laughs> 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 Number 21, during Ethan's final tribal council, he said if he wins, he would like to use the money for good. Now, many people say things like this, and as far as I know, it almost never happens. But not for Ethan. He held true to what he said he would do. I lived and played professional soccer in Zimbabwe. And while I was there, I witnessed firsthand what was happening with HIV and AIDS and how it was destroying this community I was a part of. And at that time in my life, I didn't know what to do about it, so I didn't do anything about it. Fast forward a couple years, I went on this television show called Survivor, and I ended up winning a large chunk of money. So I used a part of that to help co-found this charity, Grassroots Soccer, with some buddies of mine. And uh, it's growing beautifully. Number 22, Eminem and Survivor. How? 
Well, in Eminem's Without Me music video, he put Jenna Lewis from Borneo and Lindsay Richter from Africa in it to parody the show Absolute Insanity. Number 23. If you thought Clarence being flirted with earlier was awkward, well, then prepare yourself. Jesse is often considered the most attractive player on this cast, and the men of the early show just can't help themselves. There goes the big X, the big X. over the face. That's nasty. Isn't it? Packing. <laughs> she even looks good with the X on her face. Just want to mention that, too. Welcome back, Jesse. Thank you. I mean, all the guys down here, you know, they can hardly speak when you walk in the room. Oh, God. Brian will be so upset that he's not here today. Believe me. <laughs> Believe me. Now, this guy's not here to defend himself. You guys are talking all about him. Oh, we, t we resuscitated Mark earlier, all right. as, I, as we mentioned. So. Oh, my God. I think Hef is on the phone right now. That's right. <laughs> you want to talk to him? <laughs> Well, she's not answering. No comment. That's all right. You think about it. Number 24. On every season of the show, a pot machete is pretty much a standard gift from production so that the tribes have a fighting chance to build shelter and cook up any food they find. But this season, they were given authentic materials, including previously used pots. You got to understand that what we were given was actual tribal um, stuff that, you know, the Maasai used. So we had this clay pot that was chipping, that had mold in it. Mm. And that's what we actually oh. had to drink around. And it's funny because they don't show any of this stuff, but that thing was full of mold. Mm. And every time that you put water on it, it was hot water, so a piece of that mold would come into the water, a piece of that Gosh. clay pot would get in there. So you'd be drinking one another, you'd be like, you know, tasting this So drinking blood was no problem. Was for no problem, but the water was actually worse. Number 25, oh boy, David Letterman is back. And as I have said before, he hates Survivor and openly mocks the show. But when it was popular, he pretty much had no choice but to have them on and do these top 10 lists. The one million dollars is being paid in Argentinian pesos. You see, there you go. When people get confused and think you're one of those big brother losers. The United States Air Force mistook us for an Al-Qaeda training camp. Oh no. That's... <laughs> okay, this isn't a Survivor thing, but those chicks on The View never shut up. Yeah, right. <laughs> Everyone except me was incredibly whiny and annoying. I knew I'd end up being humiliated when Survivor ended, but I never dreamed I'd be reduced to going on Letterman. Yeah. <laughs> you know how 1-800-MATTRESS says they'll deliver anywhere? Uh-huh. Not true. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You get off the plane after not showering for 39 days, and everyone thinks you're the American Taliban dude. Yeah, I can see where that would be a problem. Jeff Probst is all hands. Uh-oh, look Jeff Probst is all hands. Wait a minute. Number 26. Remember when Lex turned on Kelly Goldsmith when she did absolutely nothing wrong? She was robbed and needs a second chance to play, and I don't say that very often. Anyways, in an unaired scene, Brandon actually talked to Lex all night to turn on her. And also, Brandon lied to him. Brandon, yeah. you know, they didn't air it, but Brandon stayed up all night spoon feeding him this jargon that he heard me say this and that. I never said that thing about being a free agent. I, I mean, <laughs> he just made it up. Yeah. And, you know, kudos to Brandon for a creative strategy, I guess. Number 27, that boulder challenge was iconic and yet such a dumb idea. Who planned this out and thought this would go okay? Someone was bound to get hurt. How could they not? Because there were people falling over. I was run over. I still have a scar. Yeah, I was rolled over by the boulder and creamed. And then I heard uh, Carl Blancioni say, keep going, run her over. <gasps> you know, these people were, were mean. Number 28, pretty much anyone who applies for the show and gets picked is usually so glad to have played and thinks they were just a wonderful addition to the cast. Well, everyone except Brandon. I really want to thank Mark and Craig and Tom and all the producers for um, picking me for this because I think I was such, I, I really thought I was a bad choice and I thought that y'all had made a big mistake and you may think you made a big mistake too. I will, no matter what happens, good or bad in my future, this will stand out as one of the best months of my life. Number 29, let's imagine you're going to get married. An elaborate wedding that has taken many, many months to plan and is not cheap at all, but you don't have a good feeling about it. Would you cancel the whole marriage only a few weeks before? And if anyone's planned a wedding and has a mom that's involved and all that, it was a really hard decision for me to decide. This isn't the right thing for me and it's not the right thing for him either. And it was tough. I mean, most people said, oh, Kim, you have cold feet. You know, it's, it's really natural. just that it's natural. It's just nerves. And there was something inside of me that said, no, this is wrong. And for me to persevere and, and go be beyond everything else that everyone was telling me to do and say, no, I know I'm right. Number 30, when Lex was sussing out who voted for him, he suspected pretty much everyone except for T-Bird, the actual person who did it. But what if Lex hadn't assumed and just calmly asked everyone? First of all, let me say, if Lex had a said T-Bird, was that you that voted for me last night? I'd have said, Lex, it was. 
probably that might not have been the best thing to do, but he never asked me. He just said, you know, I know you're the real deal. I don't, you know, I know you didn't vote for me. And so I just kept looking at him like, okay. Yeah. So I didn't say anything. Number 31. Jessie was a recruit for the show, but she did see some episodes before playing. Yeah, believe it or not, Survivor's been recruiting pretty much since the beginning, and Big Tom is another one who had never seen the show before. The strategy I have different than Africa is, when I was in Africa, I was just myself. I never watched the show, and my wife was a big fan, and I was just kind of doing what she said. Number 32. In this interview with Fairplay, Tom and Lex recall how they met on Survivor and what they thought about each other. This in-person chilling, drinking a beer style of interview is my absolute favorite. But what'd you think of me when you first met me? I thought you was a freak. <laughs> and and I was... thought he was a fat redneck. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you were both correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, Spoiler alert. And I was just saying, man, I know right now I said, well, there's one I'm not gonna, you know. I work can't. with. As soon as we got into the game, I realized, because I, I approached Tom first, and yeah, he was uh, probably like, oh, God. Here I, 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 <laughs> but, didn't, I, didn't really, I didn't know the game, and he said, you want to make an alliance? I went, oh, God, here he is. But I, you know, I didn't know what alliance was. I said, wait a minute, what? what a I, I looked at Tom. He's, here's a guy. He was married, had a son. I'm married. I have a son. He's a guy that I could tell when I make a handshake deal and an agreement with him, that he would be good on his word. I, you know, you can sense that after you've been with somebody in a, in a kind of a tense situation. And right. that first day was very, was, was terrifying and there was a lot on the line, but I got to know him pretty quick. And I said, this is the guy that I want to go to the very end of the game with, no question. And we had by, by midday on day two, our alliance was, was completely c cemented. It was, that was it. Number 33, Richard Hatch was big time after Borneo from TV show appearances to constant interviews to essentially being considered the king of Survivor until All Stars happened. Here is one example. Over here, super fast DSL internet service from MTS. Here, the choice in channels and crystal clear digital quality of MTS TV. Now get them together in a bundle from MTS. Six, five, four, can't say anything about a rocket. Get the MTS DSL Internet TV bundle and you'll save up to $10 every month. It's just two of the many services, now together from MTS. Why is there a gold line painted on that board? Number 34, The Simpsons, a show I haven't watched in a long time, but they used to parody Survivor, like in this case, when they do a parody of Africa. Okay, tribes, it's been a rough week. Rhino, you lost the tribe's fishing equipment. <laughs> And we saw a dramatic collapse in the Lion Gazelle Alliance. So which secret surprised you the most? Comment below and let me know. Thank you for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.